Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. C-R-C. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. How's it going, folks? Sam Healy. What's up? Fellas and gals, and you need to let me do my intro. I didn't realize your intro was that long. Go ahead. You say folks? Fellas and gals and folks and stuff. That's I always right. say folks, so I tried to... I changed it up, sorry. We need to be quiet. He wants to get started. <laughs> Okay, we are now in the bottom half of our top 100, or the top half, whatever. We're like the top in the, half. The we're second in, half, how about that? We're in the top it's 50 now. True. This the is super half. exciting. Do we need to restart? Yes. All right, cool. This is like super professional, this intro. Yes. So right. now we need to restart. Now, let's keep going. You said it. All right, so anyhow, uh, these games get really good at this time, I think. Yeah. I mean, now. they're already amazing. Okay, some people keep saying that, like, Oh, these games in the 70s and 80s aren't that good. They're amazing. We play <laughs> thousands of games here. Yeah. Uh, but these are the most amazing. Although on this list, most of them are games. Are, I have two new ones. Other than that, the rest are all games that have been on here before. Okay. <laughs> new. Uh, new. 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 Wow. New. New. <laughs> That's like half of them. Uh, over half. Wow. Yeah. And you don't this, know. This segment. Because you don't remember what your top 50 are. No, I'm sure I'll have two new ones. Great. Or so. Let's find out. Number 50. All right, here we go. Number 50 is a game put out by Portal Games. And it has to do with aerial control. Nerishima Hex, but you already put Cry, that on your list. Cry Havoc. So it has to be Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc wow. is correct. That's right for all those people who said that it was a flash in the pan, still in your top 100. No, yeah, absolutely. Definitely my top 100. Uh, the only quibble, and it really it's a minor quibble with me, is is the combat mechanism. I think that's your favorite thing about the that's game. That's amazing. Well, I, okay, yeah, but I, it's okay for me, but the rest of the game, the variable player powers, the different... Uh, cards that you can use, the kind of the, it's almost like a technology tree, your cards and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff that you can use to to attack your opponents. And that's about to get even um, more complicated yeah, with, the, with expansion the expansion coming correct. out soon. So uh, there's just so much good thing, so many good things about this game. Um, the combat me mechanism for me kind of flew under the radar, but I'm able to overlook that because of everything else that the game offers. Um, I like the fact that it has, uh, first of all, a very picturesque board, not not picturesque, that's not the right word, but it's a very um, vibrant board, I guess you could say. There's a lot of colors, there's a lot of uh, things going on on the board, but each section is still very well delineated, and it's not a question of, well, does this connect to this, and all this other kind of stuff. I also like how the board wraps. That's another good thing, cool thing about the board. I like scrolling boards. So, uh, I love this game, it's, it's great. Uh, my number 50, Cry Havoc. My number 50 was my number 17 last year. And while that seems like a big drop, I, it just where it showed up, really. Okay. You know, it, it's still really high on the list. And that is Airlines Europe. I still really like the game. Wow. In fact, it's one of the few... Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's one of the few games in my top 100 that right. I play almost every year for sure. You know, it, Airlines Europe gets played at some point. Huh. It scales well for me. I love the whole idea of, hey, I'm getting these different... Um, stocks in the different companies, but that stock might go up. I like stock market. Oh, why? This is my favorite stock market game, I guess, because I already mentioned Stockpile. Right, right, right. This is not... There aren't any more stock market games on your list? <laughs> I don't know, probably. Did you just, said just this update, update your that when it comes market. around, man. No, no, I misspoke. This is my favorite. Well, this favorite. is not as much of a straight stock market game. It's more of a collection game. It's almost if you take the game Loco, which... Yes, from uh, Reiner Canizia, Reiner Canizia. Uh, Botswana, whatever. Botswana, or whatever that game is. In that game, you're collecting tiles, but at the same time trying to make those tiles worth something. Yes. It's the same concept okay. here. You're collecting cards like from the different planes, but you're also trying to make that company better and expand more. And it really holds up well. It used to be called Union Pacific. The redone version here, really great. Airlines Europe. Cool. All right, my number 50 is a game that used to be in my top 10, actually. Uh, and it's dropped considerably because I played 
It's so very much. What do you think it is? Oh no, I was I thought it was something else. And that's not because you played it's it so much. It's a party much. game. Dixit? No, I mentioned that already. Lost top ten, yeah. Apples it's, apples? No, I don't like apples to apples that much. I don't hate on apples to apples, but I don't like it that much. It's categories. It's uh compatibility. Compatibility. Wow, but you're always like raving about this. I one. do I mean okay, it's again, it's your fifty, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> used to be in my top. You just 10, made the argument that we always say, made. Oh, come on. And then I used it against you. <laughs> what a fool. Um and again, I did not check any old list when I was making this one. Didn't want that to, to mess with where things were ranked. I was just going at face value. And like I said, compatibility was in my top 10 uh, at one point. It's also the but cheapest game in your top 50, I bet. Probably. You can now. find it at like every thrift store. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, and it's uh, it's just a really easygoing, very simple party game that is great for couples. You have to play in, you, you know, the ideal way to play is in teams of two. And I just really enjoy the game. It's a breezy play. It's you take like you know a minute to explain, and then everyone's pretty quickly uh, getting into how, you know, trying to match up how you think with whoever you're playing with, or you know the way I like to play, just just do whatever you think is right, and then see if you match. Don't don't try to get in the other person's head. I just really enjoy it, and like I say, I mean, I used to rate it a ten. I don't know what it is right now. Maybe it dropped a little bit for me, but um, I really like it. But obviously, at some point, it's the replayability will slow down. You don't get new pictures, you don't get new cards, you know, so eventually it's like, okay, I've, I've, I've felt this feeling before. I'm not getting that sense of discovery anymore. That's why it's dropped a little bit for me. But I still really, really adore the game. It's one of my favorite party games, obviously. So my number 50, compatibility. It cracks me up. It's your top 50 of the game, and he's like, yeah, you can find it in any thrift store. It's not, not a negative. It's just that it's not being published today. Yeah, it's just an older game. Yeah. <laughs> number 49. My number 49 was also once in my top 10. Last year it was 23, so it's on a Aww. slow decline, I guess. But that's because this game is continually getting more complicated, and I liked it when it was simpler, and that's Mage Wars Academy. Now, Mage Wars itself was a fairly complex game, and then they added more and more and more cards, mm -hmm. and I like it. I, I, I like it. It's complex. Then I played Mage Wars Academy, and boom, I'd rather play that. Simpler game, put out the cards, and each expansion they add is upping that complexity again. It's like they're moving it in the direction of Mage Wars, which, again, okay. is not a bad thing. I really like it. It simply dropped out of my top ten because almost no one wants to play this with me. You know, it's I really like Mage Wars. I like the idea of having the book and putting out the cards. Just people don't play it, but I still think it's a fascinating game. I like how you don't have to worry about shuffling your deck, which in Magic Together you can make the greatest deck ever, and a bad shuffle can ruin you. Right. You know, in Mage Wars you don't have that problem. You can just pay for whatever cards you want, and there's a huge diversity between the different mages. Magic has five colors, while Mage Wars has like eight, ten different mages, and they all feel very different on how right. they play. And there's just, you know, everything also works too. There's not like junk cards. You know, magic, you get the cards and you just throw away all the commons and keep the rare. Or there might be that one common that works. Um, and Mage That's Wars, good. there's no commons or rares. So there's a lot of things I like about it. Mage Wars Academy. Cool. Probably not in your top 100s either of you. I've never played it. I played uh, Mage really? Wars once. Was not a fan. Mm -hmm. And Mage oh, Wars Academy, I never played. So You yeah. might like that one better because they get rid of the board. Right. And you're just putting out guys and attacking each other. <clears throat> All right, my number 49 is a uh, co-op game called Forbidden Desert. Forbidden Desert is the follow-up to... This is the first pandemic you'll see on the <clears throat> list. It's the only one. <laughs> no. Uh, Forbidden Island is uh, very... It, it's the first one in this Forbidden series, okay? And Forbidden Island was very similar to Pandemic. It, it felt like Pandemic Light. Right. It was the pandemic you could play with... With kids, almost. With kids, with just about anyone. It's very accessible, very simple. But it... I, I like Pandemic and Forbidden Island. It was too simple. It, after a while, I was like, okay, you know, this is not giving me the replayability I want. Forbidden Desert, the follow-up to that, does give me that replayability. And it's different enough from Pandemic that it felt original, it felt, it felt brand new. And that's why I like it so much. So you will not see Forbidden Island on my list, obviously, but Forbidden Desert, I really, I really enjoy. It's a fun mechanically. It is a neat theme. Uh, the powers are cool. The just the idea of this moving sandstorm around the desert is handled from a mechanical point of view in a very clever way. So I really, really like this one. Forbidden Desert is my 49. My 49 is a game that I don't think either of you guys have played. I've been talking about it uh, for a while now. A um, game that you really like that we haven't played. Yeah. Is it this year? 
Yeah, this, new. Is, this is one of the new ones. Right? Okay, you so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that new the Wasteland Express that I really want to play. Negative. It's not that V Commandos. You mentioned that already. Not that one. Hmm. What other game has he been playing that that he likes and we haven't played yet? Because we're morons. I've only been able to play it at conventions. Well, no, not know. just at conventions. I've played it other than that, but mainly at conventions. I I, I do not know. Well, most recent convention, rather. Uh, this one's called Cutthroat Kingdoms. Uh, this is a uh, one that it's a card. Oh wow! Game. Okay. It has different people at the uh, that are that are coming to this. Um, well, they're coming ultimately, to the they're, they're coming throats. to a, uh, a... Seems like that's the theme, right? I guess so. Um, so then also, in this game, it's a trick-taking game. No, it's not a trick-taking game. I'm waiting for him to shut up so I can compose my thoughts. Oh, I thought you lost <laughs> your... I was trying to save you. No. I was coming in for that. Hey, I got your back. <laughs> no. Okay, so basically, the whole... The game revolves around this this wedding that's going to happen, and and people can get married at a wedding. But uh, there's also <laughs> all of these things. Usually, uh, well, no. What I meant by that is there could be multiple people getting married in the Would wedding. Would anyone else here like to get married? Anyway, Let's uh, do it. the the whole point of the game is is to is to of course get the most points, okay. and you do this by stabbing people in the back for the most part. I at know the it. wedding. Um, no, not well. Actually, yeah, you can actually do that. You can get married to somebody and then on the very next turn stab them in the back. Ah, that's and, not what I meant. That's really messed and, up. And then just, you know, it's... <laughs> what kind of game is this? It's, it's a really, really, really mean game. But it's really fun as well. Oh, this is the one with the raven on the front, right? Or that, that anamorphic animal. Well, no, 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 no. no. That's anthropomorphic. anthropomorphic. That, that also... Animal. No, there's no anthropomorphic animals in this game. Oh, you're thinking um, of Brutal Kingdoms. Yes. That's Brutal Kingdoms. Yes. But so many kingdoms. Cutthroat Kingdoms is a really neat card game. It comes with a really cool board. It's actually kind of a, um, almost like a small tablecloth, almost, because it's actual cloth. It's not a, it's not the neoprene thing, but it's a cloth. Nah, you lay I don't on like those kind of It's boards. really neat, huh. actually. Okay, cool. It's really neat. But it's a great card game. There's a lot of um, subterfuge. There's a lot of stabbing people in the back and it's there's an area control mechanism where you're trying to control these different cities that are around the board and those cities give you different powers and it's just there's a lot of really cool stuff about it and i really enjoy the game i've enjoyed it a lot so far planning on enjoying it more in the future i need to try this out but if 49 we ever, if we ever got married cutthroat kingdoms i would not stab you in the back that's a lie and a half Shh. number 48 all right, my number 48 has already shown up in uh, Mr. Healy's list. It's Cutthroat King. No, it's Like not. two top tens ago, something like that. Uh, this is Raptor. Oh, okay. Cool. Raptor is a fantastic two-player game with quick turns, but a lot going on on the board. It's a very tactical game. There's a, there's a ton of reaction to what the, your, your opponent is playing, and that's my favorite kind of game. I'm all for strategy, but games in which I have to react turn to turn just really do it for me they keep me engaged you know as opposed to a strategy in which i like set something in motion and then i just push the button we're having to react to what's going on oh man and this right. game gives me that through and through um theme's really cool though certainly as you mentioned it when you when you talked about it it is you can see through it right like if you get real close you can be like okay there's the gears turning but I, I can, you know, sort of step back and just enjoy the raptors and the scientists going at each other and trying to, you know, uh, the, the mama raptor protecting the babies and attacking the scientists. And if you get into that theme, you're going to have a great time. And mechanically, it's extremely robust. So two player only raptor, my number 48. Cool. Good call. My number 48 is not new to the list, um, and this is a game that I've really enjoyed a lot. It, it is a one versus all game called Spectre Ops. Oh, well then you're probably excited about the new version yes, coming out. Yes, I am very excited about the new version. It is a standalone, and it can also be right. uh, in, um, combined. combined. It looks almost like a repeat, though. Like <clears throat> Spectre Ops again. New map, new special abilities and stuff. Which is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. But, I mean, that kind of has to be that if they're going to make it compatible with the other. Yeah, that's true. It's true. So, and maybe there's something new in it. I don't know. Oh, uh, well, I think, uh, I know the backstory is different. Now, they, they've brought Well, they Raxon, put it in that Raxon they, universe. They, they brought Raxon into it, and you're, you're trying to infiltrate the evil Raxon Corporation. Raxon is doing the world good. 
Yes. Okay. Umbrella too. <laughs> Umbrella too. Uh, the reason I like this game, it, it, it's, it falls into the same category as uh, Fury of Dracula. Um, that one that you like, uh, the one on the, uh, not on the underground, but uh, the Scotland guy. Yard? S sure, yeah, that one. Um, I think so. The one where you're trying to get the guy to move all these different places it has that same feel. Whitehall, Whitechapel. Oh, the underground yeah, sure. is yeah. actually, but is it has it? nothing. That's not an all well, versus it's, one it thing. it falls in the same category for me okay. as far as it's moving a traversal things. kind of games. Yeah, traversal, right. I, I really Ooh, enjoy I that, but word. I know that's like a 50 cent word. Um, the thing I like about this is, is the fact that I like both sides of the board as far as playing which side I'm going to play. I, I love I love being the guy that's sneaking in. Right. I love doing that. But I also really enjoy being on the team of people trying to catch the guy that's sneaking in. Mm -hmm. Really enjoy both sides of it. And this one plays um, a lot faster than some of those other ones that have the same general idea in it. Right. Like Fury of Dracula and all those other guys. I wonder this that's will be true. in your top so, 50. So uh, Spectre Ops, my number 48. Great game. Top, you should give it a try. Top 500? No, I don't like it that much. I know you hated it when you played it. Oh, I right. didn't hate it. It's just I I already got Fury of Dracula. And for me, my number forty-eight was seventy-four last year, so it's moved up. And I don't know. I just this this sort of game is really on my thing right now. And that's the worker placement games. And this is Lords of Waterdeep. Now this is with the expansion. Okay, I really like the expansion a lot. Okay. I think it adds a lot more Scoundrels variety. Of Scoundrels of Skullport. I like that whole corruption thing. Like, you don't have to do corruption. You can totally ignore it if you want. But it's tempting, you know, like, oh, I want some corruption because there's a lot of good stuff to get. That's what corruption does. It tempts. I know. And it, so it's and thematic, it too. So it's a game that, that both entertains you and teaches you a life lesson. Yes. <laughs> about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> if... If the, if the lich asks you to help him, you say no. no. But when you're really far if away. someone asks if you're a god, you say yes. yes. Right. I'm super confused. Which Who should I be following? Anyway. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Lords of Waterdeep is a really great worker placement game. It still holds up pretty well. <laughs> I still see it being played a lot in different situations. I have a kind of a blink down version where I replace the cubes, little dudes. You know, <laughs> but again, again, I, again, I won't play without the the expansions because it adds right. more buildings and more cards. Really like Lords of Waterdeep. My number forty-eight. Cool. Number forty-seven. My number forty-seven is a game that uses one of my absolute favorite mechanisms, that is card drafting. And this is a game that came out after Seven Wonders and felt very, very similar, while still being its own game. This is Among the Stars, my 47. And, uh, wow, this is still pretty high. It is, and it, there's a lot of things to like about it. I enjoy that it's a sci-fi theme. I enjoy that the card drafting then translates into basically tile laying, because it, there is a spa spatial element, uh, spe spatial? Yeah. Yeah. spatial element on the board after you've actually drafted the cards. You have to manage energy, you have to manage your... Uh, kind of what you're scoring for, and you have on top of that, <clears throat> excuse me, your own special alien power, which I really like as well. So this feels like it took Seven Wonders and made a few tweaks here and there, added the sci-fi theme, and I, I really like it. Not to say I don't like Seven Wonders, it might even be higher than this. You don't know, shut up. But among the stars... I'd like to apologize for Zeke Garcia telling our listeners to <coughs> shut up. Hush up is what I meant to say. Yeah, because that's better. <laughs> Hush just, your mouth. That just mouth. sounds like a librarian. Hush up. Hush up your mouth. Now let me ask you this. Have you played Fields of Green? Uh, no, I try. I set it up and I looked at it. <coughs> Excuse me. I set it up and I looked at it and it looked uh, boring. Now you played Fields of Green. You like Among the Stars better? Yes. Here's the thing. I really think Fields of Green is, is a better game. Not, not, not... I'm not talking about... Taking theme out, mm -hmm. I think it has a different. No, oh, again, no, because it has different piles, and you can pull from the different piles. Here's you what want. I did not like. From again, I did not play. I set it up. I looked at it. I kind of went through a fake round. I don't like that upkeep of uh, like this feeds that, and then this feeds over here, and then like th th that that fa uh, phase at the end of a round keeps compounding on itself, and eventually the third time you go through building, not only do you have a board that's this big apparently, but you, there's a lot of upkeep, like, wait, oh, I was saving that water for this. Right, right, right. Let me not forget that. There's too much of that. So I like this one because it's it, it gets to it. 
it, there's yes probably mechanically it's not as robust but I just enjoy it more I still like Among the Stars. It was my number 66 four years ago. It's now dropped to 229. Okay. It's slowly like fading out for me. I, I like it, but there's so many drafting games now there are. that I'm liking better. And that's yeah. my thing. And I like the space station aspect. But, no. All right. My number 47 was already on Z's list. This was 73 last year. It's another one that's shooting up highly. It is a Euro game. There are so many Martin Wallace style Euro games like cars and trains or whatever. Not trains, but airplanes where it's like, hey, we're going to take this convoluted thing and you can move this to here to this to there. And on turn three, after doing all this stuff, you get a car. I want a game where I get a car on turn one and that's Automania. Automania, you just grab a tile, you run your machine. You have a car right away. You sell your car for points or money, and it goes around quickly. Mm -hmm. It's smooth. It's fast. Every time I play it, I'm thinking, why is this game not more popular? It's yes. really one of the best medium-weight Euro games I've ever played. Well, hence it being on my list. I just you think said, it's fantastic. Uh, you said um, Martin Wallace. Were you referring to his style of game? Because I want to make sure people know this, this is not, not a Martin Wallace game. You're right, not right, right. a Martin Wallace game. I'm just comparing it to, like, Martin Wallace made a game called Automobiles. And then there's also that... Kanban game from Stronghold, right, right. and these games are these. I'm not saying these games are bad, but it's this big convoluted thing. A lot going on. Do this, do this. What color are you going to paint the car? I'm exaggerating now, but all these things, and Kanban, you're like, I'm doing a car, done. I in, like that. In Automania, yes. Automania. Automania. Yes. I'm super I like, confused. I, I really, really like it a lot too. Obviously, yeah, it's super engaging. It's quick. Be why you're confused. Stop, <laughs> stop drinking. Stop I thought drinking. this was grape. <laughs> it is fermented grape of the grapes. <laughs> well, what's your number? <laughs> Sorry, I can't even act drunk. <laughs> Might be a good thing. Uh, my number forty-seven is uh, uh, another new addition to the list. Um, came out from Arcane Wonders this year. Is in the Dice Tower Essentials line. Viral. Viral is. Wow, correct. you really liked Viral. I did. I did nice. like it. I like it a lot. I liked uh, again. The theme really jumps out at me. Um, it is a rather eccentric theme. There's there's not a whole lot of games out there that that uh, where you know the players are viruses invading this and you know wreaking havoc within this uh, person's body. He might make it. He doesn't make it. He makes um, it, dude. No, he he, game. he does not. This is Osmosis Jones. This game. This is not. <laughs> this is this is the R-rated version of our Osmosis it's, Jones. To be clear, this is not an R-rated game at all. No, it's not. But it's the <laughs> R-rated version of our Osmosis Jones. Oh, you mean where he dies at the end? Okay, maybe PG-13. That would be a terrible yeah, you movie. Die. You can die in like a PG movie. NC-17 maybe? What? <laughs> what are you going? I don't know. Which way is that? I don't know. NC-17 is like the worst thing. Well, except uh, right under like X-rated. Oh, it's worse than R. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I've never watched it. He's been wondering, like, all these movies, they seem really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought NC-17 was 17 months old. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh. I, I, who cares about the anyway, ratings? Anyway, anyway. It's a PG game, folks. Clarify. Definitely, it definitely is. Well, okay. He makes it. Viral is a fun game. I like the... I like the, uh, the the area control of it. I like uh, the take that element of it, of where you're going after and you're attacking people. You can knock people out of their situations and that type of thing. Uh, the board looks great and it's functional. Um, the special, you know, variable player powers that each person has mm -hmm. that's really cool as well. There's just a lot of things that hit on the right cylinders for me. So my number 47, yeah. viral. The whole thing really feels very organic. Yeah, I really like that you were too. Trying to work that in somewhere, weren't you? You were trying. You were waiting. I missed it. Get it? Organic. Shut up. Cut that. Cut that video. <laughs> number forty-six. My number forty-six. Has it ever been in my top ten? I wonder. It's been high. It was twenty-seven last year, but I mean, it's very close to the same area. Okay. Two-player game. I believe has already been on Sam's list, and that's Twilight Struggle. Was it on your list? I can't remember now. Not yet. Oh. <laughs> I don't Spoiler think so. Spoiler much? I don't know. Twilight Struggle is not on my list yet either. <laughs> you still haven't played like it. This year, I mean. It's not on the list. You, you've never played it. I don't know if you'd like it or not, but it is, it's a really solid game. Very historical. Um, you know, if you want to learn about the Cold War between 2000, well, when does the game end? Like, in, oh, 1989. That's right. So from, basically, 1980, from 1945 to 1989. And it's great. The space race is included. This game is just chock full of history, but it's also a really good free-flowing area control game. We're trying to control Europe, we fight in Europe, and then we're over in Asia, then we're over in Central America, then we're over here, and we're going back and forth. Oh, such a great game. Twilight Struggle. 
And I think there's an app out, which I need to get, because that would be a lot of fun to play. Hmm. Ooh, does it really help? Is there, like, it, it No, like, you can play it game? on the app against Ooh. someone else, I think. I know it's on Steam. I'm not sure if it's on an app yet, Ooh. but I definitely want to try it out. That's interesting. I think it's me or Sam. It's Sam. I don't know. He looked at you first. I did, but it's 46. He's he always confuses us. I'm, I'm, I'm not really a with it today. What's up with me? All right, my number 46 is a small, I am, and I mean dinky. Comes in a box about that big. Which for you is your medium size. Yeah. Dice game. <clears throat> Oh. A dice game? Yeah. Dice game. Nothing but dice. You're going after these different castles that are on the board. Yahtzee? No. Castles on the board. Is this the Canizia game? Age of War, yes. Oh, wow. wow. No way. I really enjoy this. See, you like first... Risk Express this much? Yes, that's pretty The first time I played this, I thought that it would be too light for you. No, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I like I like the, the, the dice, which are really the main component of the game, are really nice dice. First of all, uh, they're custom made. Of course, they have these different uh, symbols all over them, uh, standing for the different symbols. There's archers, there's daimyos, there's, uh, oh man, I can't swords. remember. Swords. One, uh, two, katanas, three. actually. Um, Get katana, it right. Katana swords. Yeah, they're, they're called katanas. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the whole gist of it is, is you're, you're really just trying to roll a combination of these different symbols that are represented on these different uh, castles that are part of these different regions in Japan. And if you roll the right symbols of dice in one go, then you get that castle as part of it. There's always this, also a set collection aspect of it too, where if you collect all of the castles in one region, then you can flip them all over and they cannot be stolen from you and they mm -hmm. give you a higher number of points. I never steal in this Stuff game. like this, yeah, right. Everybody does. Um, it, it's just, it can, it can be played in 30 minutes. It is fun to play. It's easy, way so easy to teach. Um, and it is, it, it just brings people together, and it and turns go fast. Everybody's involved because you're you're either rooting them on or you're rooting against them because they're trying to steal your castle. There's just so much so much cool about this, and uh, I really enjoy it. My number forty six, Age of War. I like it. My number forty six is going to combine both of yours, guys. It's going to be a little. I believe you called a dinky, a dinky little game. Wait, we went from Twilight Struggle to Age of War, like the two opposite extremes. And it's also a two player only game, so I'm going to take both of those things. And you very recently mentioned Portal games as well. My number forty six is from Portal. This is Tides of Madness. No, that's nothing like what we just said. Well, two player, small game. Portal. That's all I said. Yeah. Also, it's about the Cold War. Yeah. He... <laughs> <laughs> the Cold War against Cthulhu. Yes. Right. Cthulhu War. Uh, Tides of Time is a is a predecessor to this. It's a two-player card drafting game. That's all there is. You're gonna draft cards, pass them to your opponent, so you very quickly know what you're giving them, what you're very likely to get back, and therein lies the interest in the game. Drafting a tableau trying to manipulate what's going on on the table, but also your opponent. This is a follow-up to that. It's a very, very similar game. This one introduces mainly one new mechanism, and that is some of the cards give you madness, and you cannot go above a certain number of those, or you, you go insane, uh, as fitting a Cthulhu game. Uh, I, I like that there's a little extra oomph to it. I, I like Tides of Time just fine. It's a really fun game, but Tides of Madness for me has fantastic artwork. The first one did too, but Man, some of this, like I like that Cthulhu artwork. Some of the best Cthulhu artwork out there is in this little card game. I agree, the artwork is phenomenal. And I just enjoy that pushing your luck on top of the drafting. Sometimes I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna win, but they are really being careless with their Cthulhu cards. Here you go. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bust them, you know? Have you ever seen that happen very often? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Madness? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. I've seen it happen a lot. So I really enjoy it. Very light game, simple, but the kind of game I, you know, that it feels like you can keep it in your back pocket, and and if you got 15 minutes, you can knock this out. Tides of Madness, my number 46. We need to talk. <laughs> number 45. All right, my number 45 is a game that can't remember if it's been mentioned on yours yet already. I think you have. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom talks about it. You don't know what it is. I did talk about it. You maybe did. At some point. Um, it is a nature-themed game in which light is a currency. Photosynthesis? That is correct. Well, I think we both mentioned it, right? No, I did not. You talked about it. <clears throat> yeah, I Am I the only person who put it on my list? 
Uh, so far, so now far, there's yeah. two. Yeah, now there's two. You like it more than me, then? Yeah, I do. We really um, like this game. I liked it first. No, I technically said it first in the list. Yeah, but I did the review first. Yeah, well, again, as I said earlier, this is... Oh, I know why I think we mentioned it. We all mentioned it in the Gen Con list. Yes, of games right, to check out right, at Gen right, Con. right, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, Photosynthesis is by Blue Orange Games, and it is a, uh, a game in which you are planting trees in this forest that is hexagonal shaped and you are uh, trying to position your trees in such a way that they will catch the most light as the sun moves around the board uh, and it goes so far as to determine how far your tree is going to cast shadow a level one tree will cast it one hex away and, and so forth and so on and and so you're trying to position your trees to where that it catches the most light and doesn't fall within the shadow of another tree uh, you know, one more than the other. You want to be in the light more than in the shadows. And uh, I just hmm. really enjoyed this. The anti-ninja game. That's true. That's true. Now, here's an, interesting, sorta. Here's an interesting thing. We, our friend Jason is really good at complex games. He likes these games a lot. And Photosynthesis, he says, is one of the best games of the year. Really? He has played it like 40, 50 times, he said, which is, probably means 10. What? But he really likes it. He said there's a lot, really deep strategy in the game, yeah. which is good. I like that. No, there is. That he likes it, and I like it, too. You That's know. great. Right, right. Yeah. But I, I, I really enjoy the, the game. I, I enjoy, um, you know, the currency aspect. I enjoy how it keeps you restricted on what you can put out there because if you don't have it on your board you can't put it on the mm -hmm. you have to pull it off of the board in order to be able to use it again so there's a a uh, little bit of a restriction there just a lot of cool things about the game that i really enjoy the pieces are are awesome they're all cardboard but they're uh the standees that that kind of fit together like so and they're very durable um the only minor quibble that, that i think you mentioned about it was the box the box was kind of uh, lackluster, but everything inside the box is great. So we really enjoy the game. I really enjoy the game. Number 45, Photosynthesis. Cool. All right, my number 45, apparently this is the, this chunk of uh, the top 100 is the two-player chunk. I've already talked about Raptor. I talked about Tides of Madness. This is also a two-player only game from the uh, one of the designers of Raptor. This is Mr. Jack. And Ooh, this, uh, is, this is higher on my list. Yeah, right. You hate this game. I really And this do. is for whichever one you want, okay? I just mentioned it one time, Mr. Jack in New York or Mr. Jack. The second one, the New York one, slightly more complex, but also more freeform. What about Fam of the Opera? Uh, I don't know if I if that has its own entry, which is why I'm not sure if I'm mentioning it. Because um, that one feels different enough, you know oh, what really? I mean? Yeah, I yeah, think so. Yeah, it feels so. the same thing. I might, I might be talking about that later. I'm not sure. Spoiler alert. But if I'm not, then yes, that one too. Uh, the whole thing is a deduction game, which really just means you need to eliminate possibilities until you've got the one answer. Though that's not always the case. Sometimes you do run out of time. The person looking for Mr. Jack am hiding among these characters. You simply do run out of time. You're down to two possibilities. The night is running out, and you just pick one. Maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. But normally, you eliminate everyone but one sus suspect, you catch them, okay? And you, as the Jack the Ripper player, are attempting to confound that information. The game is extremely puzzly. I mean, if you don't like puzzles, if you don't like staring at the board for a couple of minutes going, well, if I do this, then you do that, and then I do this, you're, you're not going to like it. I mean, that is the kind of game it is. But I really enjoy that. It adds, like Raptor, a game that feels abstract to a really well-implemented theme. And I'm perfectly happy with that. So Mr. Jack, really neat two-player puzzly game that's been out for a while, and I'm still very enamored with it, my 45. Let me clarify. Raptor is a better game. Actually, Mr. Jack is a better game by three. Mr. Jack is also my number 45. <laughs> you are a jerk, sir. <laughs> my number 45 has been on my list ever since I've started doing top 100s. It is my favorite area, well, probably not now since it's 45, but it's always been one of my favorite area control games, and that is El Grande. It was 33 last year, so pretty much the same area here. Again, the simplicity of this game, I like it with the expansion. Well, one of the expansions, the first one, not the... America one, that's garbage. But America one, I don't know. Yeah, you can go to, they have like that, American colonies and stuff, more areas to control. Okay. No, whatever. 
But the one where you can make your own deck of cards, I really like that one, where you have your own cards. But El Grande is just a simple game. Play a card, take a card, put out cubes, and you're, but it's fighting, it's mean, you're going after each other. It's the game in which most area control games are based on El Grande in some manner yes. or fashion. Fantastic game, looks boring as all get out. No. Clarify. Yes! <laughs> it's so boring looking. It's a it's an alright game. But, but but it's a really it unfortunately it's got that old school look to it, you know, yeah. it's hard to bring to the table. And it has no Cthulhu in it, so. Cthulhu, please don't do this. Don't listen to Kramer. Anyway, I really like El Grande. It stood the test of time. Number forty four. Alright, my number forty four is a uh, it's a religiously themed game. Um, I don't want to say that it's a biblically themed game because it's based more Tides on of madness. history <laughs> than. No, it's not than, commissioned because you talked about no, it. No, it's not commissioned. No, that's not, it's from Ark Stronghold. Ark of the Covenant. That's like that's 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 oh, 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 you're talking about Sola Fide. Sola Fide. Really? Yes. Yeah. No, oh, I wow. really enjoy this game. And one of the things that really makes it pop for me is the drafting mechanism at the beginning of the game because you're not drafting from one set of cards, you're drafting from your own deck. Okay. And the other person has their own deck. But you're drafting. You draw three cards, and you only choose one of them. And so you are literally passing up cards that you really... I mean, most of the cards are very useful. Huh. You're passing up two cards because you're you're, you're choosing this one. Uh, you don't give them to your opponent, No, though? no, no, no. You just set them aside. So They're not like, used uh, in this game. It's like Nirishima X a little bit. Uh, kind of, sort of. You draw three, but you get rid of one. Yeah. Right? I mean, this one you get rid of two. Sort of, kind of, but it doesn't... I mean, I see the connection now, but I wouldn't. I, I didn't make that connection. Yeah, yeah. So from I like what that. I understand, Tough Solo choices. Fide is a very simple version of Twilight Struggle in a sense. Well, I, I think it's a rehash of what Campaign Manager or something like right, that. Right, right, right. It's a rehash oh, of Campaign right. Manager. I like Campaign Manager though. Are the sides in this game symmetrical? Are they the exact same? No, they are asymmetric. Well, that was my biggest problem with Campaign Manager. They were symmetrical. Yeah, they were almost identical. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 they're they're asymmetrical here. One side is the Protestants, one side is the, uh, uh, the Roman Catholic Church. So it's it's really cool. You're going through. It has no, uh, the game is actually played in an area control, uh, or rather, I guess it's called area majority, uh, because you have to have more of your red cubes than the other person or black cubes, whatever side you're taking. Then in each region, each region will then score uh, you a number of points if you win that region. And then some of the regions are actually face down. You don't know what they are until you actually get them. There's a revelation mechanic where uh, this one, once it's won, will flip over this one and this one, the two that are connected to okay. it. So it's it's a really fun game. I enjoy it a lot. I like the theme as well. It was a good uh, implementation there of the theme. Uh, my number 44, Sola Fide. The Reformation. My number 44 is the first crossovers with Sam Haley on this list. Sorry, is he? No. In this chunk of in top this 10? this chunk, actually. Really? Oh, it's yep. gotta be. And this one was uh, 19 last year. It's dropped a bit, but I still really like it. It has stood up to the test of time. What is it, Sammy? We've crossed over on publishers, at least, because it's Portal Games. And that is Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc. Oh. Really like the game, and I love the combat mechanism yeah. so much. I love when they reused, not reused it, but a similar combat mechanism in um, Rising Sun. Mm. Um, but I like the, yeah. the asymmetricalness of the game, I think, is my favorite part. See, that's weird. See, the I, asymmetricalness, I, man. No, 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 no. I, I, I like Rising Sun's combat mechanism better than Cry Havoc's. But they're very similar. I, no, I know that. But I think it's because in, in Rising Sun, it's secret. In Cry Havoc, you're doing it in front of everybody. So it's like you're making decisions. Oh, um, that, that's true. That's true. You know, it's, it's public and this is private. I like that private way of dealing with that combat better. That makes sense. Um, but I also like the miniatures a lot. I like the, I, I, the asymmetrical. I like the robots are there just to kill everything. <laughs> That's their thing, right? <laughs> the Marines are there to exploit. You know, they're, 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 right. they, they, they they jump. This is the planet they come to after Avatar. Yes. Um, and it. then the, the guys who live on the planet are all a bunch of incredible hawks. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I just like that. The and then there's that mystic alien race who's like, oh, we're above it all, but, but they're killing you anyway. Yeah. So I don't think they're above it all anyway. I just, I like that. The theme works and it plays quickly. It doesn't take too long. In fact, some people have complained that it plays too quickly. It, and that, I can actually see it that. It can have a very abrupt end. But, huh. So Cry Havoc, great game. Cool. All right, my number 44 is uh, new to the list. Ooh. It is a game from uh, Simon, Cool Mini or Not, and this is Ethnos. Wow, that's really high. Ethnos is an area control game. It's which is beautiful. 
I don't think it's, I don't think it's that unattractive actually. It's not unattractive. It's just yeah. It's not I think it's. I mean, you it's just put ugly. El Grande on your list, and I didn't. But I also said it was ugly. I didn't lie. No, no. But see, the thing about El Grande is, shut up. Um, <laughs> F knows. I don't think it's unattractive actually. I like the John Hugh artwork uh, or how I don't know. John Howe. John Howe. Okay. How how's who's Howie, Howie? Who's, uh, who's Howie? Howie? okay I'm sorry John we're sorry John it's John I enjoy the area control that is extremely simple and then you pad that out with special powers from the different races I like that not every uh, myth um, fantastical race is in the game every game I like that you kind of make make up a deck and so this game you might not see uh, skeletons or whatever. And I just find it to be extremely quick. The turns are lining fast. The game is straightforward. It's apparent what's going on, and you just have to be good at manipulating it. There's a few really clever mechanisms in it. I really enjoyed it, and it scales really well. That's the other thing. Hmm. I've played with literally everything from two players all the way up to six, and this is one of those super rare games that actually scales well. Cool. So uh, Eth knows... Really fantastic game. I would Check love it to see out. an expansion for this. Just more yeah. races. That's oh, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe a pretty board because this one's so. Um, <coughs> forty-four. Number forty-three. All right, we're finally to a game. This is the first one in this ten that's new to the list for me. Oh, that's the first one. It's a game. Right? <laughs> finally, we're to a game I played. But secondly, it's my <laughs> second crossover with Sam again. What is happening right now? In you guys 10? did this on purpose. Yeah. Holy Moses. But it's new. It's gotta be this. It's gotta be that, yes. Um, I, as soon as I saw the board for this one, I was I was viral. ready to play, and that's uh, viral. I was about to yeah, say it. Okay. Um, he's, he's just he's like spoiling my stuff. I'm telling you, he just pulled a, a, a counter semi Well, it sounded on you. like you were just going into it, and I, after I just pointed, yeah, it's so it that. So it sounds like when you start speaking every you time. You shut up. You. <laughs> so viral. You can't have any good things It's a anymore. unique theme. Um, again, sometimes people say on these lists, like, well, of course you put that in your list, it's in Dice Tower Essentials. But it's in Dice Tower Essentials because I thought it was a great game. Right. Right, that's the reason it's in there, and that's why you'll find them in my top 100. And I really, I just, this game is fast, it's area control, it's mean, you can mutate your hand of cards. I've always been a big fan of the playing a card from your hand, and then you kind of cycle through those cards and you can't play the next, you can't play the same card every turn in this game. And I yes, like that. Right, right. I like that you can be mean and, and and chew up the other players, their viruses and stuff. But it, but if you get too powerful, then the humans come after you. You know, the antibodies come in. Osmosis right. Joes comes in and lays down. That should be like a themed expansion for this game. If that movie was popular, you could maybe try to get it. You know, get well, it's the not license, popular, so maybe the license is license is probably like twelve bucks. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but no one cares. Anyway, I just think it's a great game. Super unique theme. Viral. All right, me. My number 43 is a two-player game. Oh, I'm so surprised. It, sounds like, it looks like you're annoyed. Basically, Z has one point. friend. I'm just like, it's weird. that I did not <laughs> think about even the top 10 chunks, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking like, oh, 51 through 40. I don't think that way. But like weirdly, some things have lined up. Like I had that like uh, abstract run. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Now it's a two-player run. Anyway, this is a Stefan Feld game. Two-player only called... Arena Roma 2. Which I still haven't specifically played. Specifically 2. Yes, specifically yeah. 2 because it's better than 1. Uh, Roma is the first one. Roma 2, which they called Arena, is the second one. I like that one better for a few different uh, reasons, uh, which I'll get back to in one second. Basically, it's a head-to-head -head game in which you roll dice, use those dice to gather money, grab more cards, or trigger cards, depending on where you paid and played them, in front of a pit. So if I you know, put this uh, tiger in front of five. If I roll a five, I can trigger that tiger to attack, to do whatever it does. Um, sing a lullaby. Um, the thing I like about mm -hmm. Arena more than Roma is that, A, there's text on the cards instead of symbols, and that was a pain. The symbols oh, we were the just talking one. about how when there's no text on cards, it's a yeah, real pain. Yeah, and you were sometimes. like looking at your opponent's symbols, looking at you upside down, you were like, wait, what's that do? Wait, uh? And so that was that. And then Mechanically, it's just more interesting. There's a, there's a few new things going on in this one. And the first one kind of had like one major path to victory. You built forums, and they made you victory points. This one, there's a lot more going on as far as how you gather points. You can be mean in the game. The game is going to be pretty confrontational anyway. But you can try to be sneaky. You can use you know some characters to 
to burn other ones down and just make a bunch of points that way. And you, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about it. This is a game I've enjoyed for a long, long time. It's one of my favorite Stefan Feld games. Arena Roma 2, fantastic two-player game. That's my number 43. Cool. My number 43 is another new game to the list. And uh, I don't believe it's been mentioned by anybody yet. Um, it was um, nominated for the... No, was it? I can't remember. My memory. I'm going to go with yes. Or no. The Quest for El Dorado. Was that nominated? Yes, for the, it was. was it but yes. Wow, that's really high. It is. I really enjoy it. I like the race aspect of it. I like racing games. Um, and I like the race aspect of this, trying to get from one point to the other, uh, using your resources to get through the, the different obstacles that are on the board and stuff like that. Um, you have a Canizia game. is number 43. What? And 46. What? Two so, Canizia games. I know, right? It's weird. But these Fan are... boy. These are... Good, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Of Here's a picture of all over his desk. Designers, of the all tie. designers that I, I could be a fanboy of, he is probably not one of them. Stefan Feld. Definitely not. Uh, but the Quest for El Dorado, I really enjoyed it. It came out of nowhere. The first time we played it, we only had the, had the German rules, and I had to kind of go through it, and I was asking you a whole lot of questions mm. because I mm -hmm. couldn't understand what all of Oh, the cards were in German. Cards, I printed yeah, the out the rules in English, in German, right, yeah. yeah. And so um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really enjoyable game. It reminds me a lot, and I said this earlier when we, when we were playing it at Origins this year, it reminds me a lot of uh, Mississippi Queen. Yes. Um, of, of, you know, because that, that path that you take really meanders uh, throughout the course. It's not just a straight path that you have to go through. You really kind of have to try to find the, the pathway of least resistance uh, based on the resources that you have available for you. Another thing that I like about, a lot about the game is purchasing new things where you have a row that you can always purchase from, but if one of those things is empty, that opens the doorway, so to speak, to all of the other cards that are available to come into the game. And then you get to choose which one of those cards now joins this row by purchasing one of them. And really, it locks the rest of them out yeah, again. Yeah, it locks right. the rest of them out again, right. I really enjoyed yeah, me that too. mechanism a lot. So my number 43, The wow, Quest. Wow, I like this Eldorado. game, but I mean, wow, that's really, that's way higher than I rate it. Cool. Uh, that's good, yeah. Number 42. All right, my number 42 is... A two-player game. Not a two-player game. What? I suspect... Don't quote me here, but I suspect we're going to see this game on both of these fellows' lists somewhat higher. Much, much higher. Is this Blood Rage? It is Blood Rage, indeed. <laughs> uh, my number you 42, Blood me? Rage. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'll leave it for Sam. <laughs> and, uh, what? It might not be on our list. Yeah, Blood Rage, I, I think the thing I like about it the most is how much theme it has, coupled with how streamlined it really is ultimately. I'm not normally a big fan of these massive sprawling things yeah, clashing really on the battlefield kind of games because I find the complexity pushes me out. If I feel like I'm doing work, I'm like, eh, I'm not really enjoying this. Blood Rage is a Euro game. I don't care what anybody says. There are certain Euro game sensibilities to it that are apparent. But that's not all it is. It's also a game Z wins a lot. Uh, which is why it's on the list. I guess. Probably. No, I just really enjoy it. And so that's what I like. I like that, that center of Euro game goodness wrapped in the chocolate and caramel. Caramel. I can't say that Car word. Car <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm it's either it. caramel or caramel. One it's both caramello, caramello. No, wrapped that's around a that uh, a that, that a Euro game player. core, um, and I think it's fantastic. But anyway, that's my number forty-two. I applaud your choice. Very Much better than the rest on your list. This week. <laughs> wow. All right, my number forty-two is another game from Arcane Wonders, and uh, this one I have. Well, Camping Mage Wars. I've really enjoyed a lot, even though I don't like the game that it's based upon. You don't like. The Robin Hood game, or the I'm no, assuming no, no. this is Sheriff. No, this is not Sheriff. Well, can't be only Tama. No, because I'm not said viral. That. Can't be Mage Wars. No. 
It's probably the one that you've. Oh, this is the. I haven't played you, this game yeah, yet. Yeah, you've. <laughs> Spoils well, you of have, War, right? But it was a very oh, early prototype. Oh, got it, got it, yeah, got Spoils it. Spoils of War is. Yeah, we played a prototype and we kind the of game. Uh, were beaten yeah, you, to the prototype. You deadpanned the, the prototype. <laughs> it rather, was rather, rather hands off. <laughs> it wasn't even um, a little bit. <laughs> Spoils of War, however, is really based upon Liar's Dice. Uh -huh. A game that I don't really enjoy that much because it's. I mean, it's really it's most too of good the time. For you. No, it's not too good for me. It's for, for most of the time, I just feel like I have to lie mm -hmm. um, to do anywhere near being competitive, and I don't really enjoy that. Um, Spoils of War, it's kind of the same thing, but there are other things added to it. There's a set collection aspect added to it where you're trying to collect these different kinds of treasure, which are giving you a lot of different points. Um, there is the team aspect where you, uh, one person becomes the declarer, the person who is uh, being challenged and the other person is becoming challenged. And then we vote upon what side of that we're, we're joining. Right. We're kind of betting upon who's right and who's wrong. And I, I like that. I like that aspect of this that um, to my knowledge is not there in Liar's Dice. Right. And uh, I like that, that coupled with the um, the, uh, the set collection, coupled with the gorgeous artwork on all of the components, um, right. just really makes it a much more fun, palatable experience for me. So my number 42, Spoils of War. Yeah, I like this one a lot, too. I thought it was too long. I had nine rounds. That was my yeah. main beef with it. Yeah. But I enjoyed the game. That's true. It does go long. But again, that's easily remedied by just cutting out, cutting out certain rounds. You could. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's, it's cool. My number 42 is new to the list. It actually, the first version of it came out last year. This is two games that I like equally as well. If you can put all the Mr. Jack games, I can do this. This has become one of my favorite deck builders that I want to pull out anytime, anywhere. And that is either Clank or Clank in Space. Sure, yeah. Now, originally when we did the review of Clank in Space, I like it better and probably give my druthers I'd play that one first, but Clank is so much faster too. I can pull out Clank and teach it. And I just taught Clank. You think so? Clank is faster? Oh, yeah. Clank in space, you have to break through the barriers and go through. Clank could be, okay, Clank can be faster. How's that? Huh. Because you can run in, grab a treasure, and get out. I like yeah. Clank in space. And that's the one much. thing I hate about that game. So you because like Clank in space it, much yeah, better? Clank okay. in space is way better. Well, I, yeah, I like I, that one better. You like Clank in space better? Yeah. But I like them both, and I really do. Yeah, we I win. Do. I don't care. Here's the thing, though. Clank, yeah. Clank didn't make my list last year, <laughs> but I kept playing it more and more and more, and it's just, it's just one of those games. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great deck builder. I There's just so much about it. I enjoy it. I enjoy the going through and finding stuff, the, the cards. It feels very thematic. Just so much fun. Clank. Number 41. All right, my number 41, as Thomas is looking befuddled at his... Sorry, list. I made a mistake somewhere. I need to figure it out. My number 41 oh, donh, don't say is that, man. a game that when I first looked at it and I saw the theme, I was like... I'm going to make a 41 on my list. No. Oh. No, it was like, I ain't going to make that anything on my list. Oh, really? Based upon the theme, yes. Based upon the theme, I, was, oh. I wrote it off. I was like, oh, no. All right, so this is a farming game. No. Well, it's like a spooky... <laughs> is it a... No, you it's farm not. farm souls. No. I don't know. I'm trying to... <laughs> no. <laughs> what game do you farm souls in? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a new game to the list. The Others. Yellow. Bunny Kingdoms? Bunny Kingdom! Whoa! Bunny Kingdom! I'm sorry, but this 100 has been like a total explosion in my mind this when it comes like, to saying. I know! No, I that's... expect stupid little games on my list. That's not a stupid little game. Yeah, no, let, me, let me let me do some self uh, <laughs> deprecation here. Oh, I expect you know what on yourself? Deprecation. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you doing? What's wrong? Stop! <laughs> Go. Just... I expect stupid little games on my list. You this know things no one cares about. This but is... these surprising things on your list are making us both. Uh, Okay, Bunny Kingdom. Spin the head spin around. I just don't remember you being that like super yeah, pumped. I just played it. That's I how saw, he is though. I You're teaching my game. He's like, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, I was yeah. just talking to a I was just talking to a listener about this the other day because um, when I was doing Master of Darkness, he was watching the uh, the video uh, that we did at Simon. Right. And he was like, uh, based on how you looked, I didn't think you would like this game. I'm surprised you rated it so high. And I told him, I said, because when I'm playing games. I try not to emote. No, I'm focused. I'm <laughs> concentrating. And when I concentrate, I tend to frown a lot. 
so I don't look like I'm enjoying myself, but I could be having a blast inside. But I also think there's a slow burn with you, too, because if you go back and watch our Blood Rage video, Sam was kind of so the like... The first time he was like... Yeah, it's, it's decent. Game now it's okay. like, Blood Rage! Eric Lang, who? <laughs> <laughs> No, Bunny Kingdoms has a lot of things that it hits on. First of all, it has card drafting. I Which, love that card drafting. Yes, mechanism. I, I love I, that in it. I <laughs> go ahead, keep going. I love the spatial aspect of the game oh. that it offers, and that's where you kind of jump off mm -hmm. uh, the cart. Card drafting's Be good though, because uh, I I actually love how it looks on the board. I love how it's it, it's kind of crowded, but I like that look um, because I like the card draft. It forces <laughs> it forces me to really focus upon what I am winning and what I am um, losing. Uh, I, I no, not losing, but what I, what I'm focusing on and what cards I'm going to be drafting during the thing. And right. That that's one of the things I like about it. I love the way it looks. I love the uh, artwork. It's great. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't like the bunny aspect of it, but I mean that's all of it almost. But I love the art style. Yes. Um, I just wish it was something else. Um, you know, orcs or something. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, orc, orc kingdom. kingdom. Yeah, that would be cool. But anyway, I, I really enjoy the game, and it you know I'm eating crow here because I, I really I literally wrote this game off when I saw the box. Yeah, literally. But uh, we played it, play it, and I I, I really enjoy it. So that's my number forty one, Bunny Kingdom. My number forty one is probably higher in Sam's list. This is a lie. Um, it was number one on Board Game Geek for a really long time. Oh, it's yeah. the first game that I played when we were like, let's get into this new Euro games. And I ordered it, and when I played, I was like, ah, it's not that good. But as time has gone by, I love it, and that's Puerto Rico. Okay. Puerto Rico, um, just an amazingly good game. Uh, now, Puerto Rico is definitely on the list of games that I kind of want to play with either all new people, so I'm teaching them all the game we're learning, or all people who are really good. Okay. Because one new person can kind of throw the game off for for a bunch of experienced players. But when you play with a bunch of experienced players, mwah, ah, so fantastic. Uh, just this game is great, although probably if I play with a bunch of experienced players, I'm the I'm the low end of the totem pole there. <laughs> They're probably like, wish Vassal wasn't here. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just love this game. I, I played it. That's one of the things I actually don't like about the game, is that the, it, it, it breeds almost this elitist mentality to playing the game because it's, it's not, so popular we're not elitist we're just better than you that's yeah, it see, like that's, that's it it's exact, not that that game is more player. like robust than any other euro game necessarily it's just that it was number one for a long time and it it almost you know it it bring it it asks for that elitism you know what i mean all right well put it okay go, which was last year was 64 so it's moved up actually number 41. All right, my number 41 is a game that has dropped for me a little bit, but it is, like Blood Rage, a game that is mechanically robust and it needs it, or otherwise it's just sort of a shapeless mess, wrapped with a lot of interesting story. And it is Time Stories, my number 41. Uh, I remember the first time I played this, after we played the first campaign, the first setting, whatever, I immediately was like, this is a 10. This game is fantastic, Oof. right? Like, it gave me... It, it made me feel and sort of engage with a game in a way I don't normally. Mm -hmm. I can enjoy games all the live long day, but it's the <laughs> that feeling of no, I got that song in my head. Uh, that feeling of um, a movie being played for me, and I can stick my fingers in it and manipulate it. That's rare, and this game did that. Now, again, I've cooled on it a little bit because of other games that do similar things, and because the stories haven't all been necessarily a 10 type story, right? But I still enjoy the game a lot, and I still think it is one of the absolute best games that is able to tell you a story without it being messy mechanically. You know, it is able to, to allow the mechanisms to inform what's going on while crazy stuff is happening, you know? And I like it for that reason very much. My number 41, Time Stories. Have you guys mentioned this yet? I have not mentioned it yet. Okay. I have not mentioned it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> 41, Time Stories. Hey, folks. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you coming on board. Things are just going to keep heating up more and more as we get to the top 40. It sounds like a music list, right, when we get there? Top 40 hits. I'm Casey Casey. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you, everybody. I am Sam Healy. All the live long day. So
Some say that Tom is like a giant among men. Others say he's a little obsessed. I don't even have a top ten. Tom Vassell's top 100 games of all time. He's got flavor in his top 100 games. C Garcia, voice of the people. C Garcia, voice of the people. Sam, he let, oh, he let, stop 100 games.